Obsidian 1.10 is now in early release, and with it comes some exciting new features for the Core Basis plugin. It adds a clean, simple list view for streamlined search results, and column summaries to give additional info about your note properties. One of the more intriguing new features is the map view. You can now create location-based notes which get displayed on a map. And the way this new map view gets added in hints at exciting new possibilities for plugin developers. Let's start by showing off the new list view. I'm in a pre-built base here. It's already got some filters and stuff on it. I'm going to go over to my views up here at the top and I'm going to add a new view. And we're going to call this list. And we're going to go down to the layout and pick the list layout. And this gives us just a simple list of all of the notes that meet the criteria for this particular base. Let's go back into here and we're going to configure this list view. So the layout is list. We're going to have bullets for our markers. We can also choose numbers if you wanted this to be a numbered list. And then you can also not have a bullet at all if you want this to just be unordered list that has no, no bullets. We're going to go ahead and put the numbers just for fun. And then we've got a couple other settings that we can use here. We've got nested properties and properties separator. Now in order to see what these do, we actually have to display some additional properties. So I'm gonna go over here to properties and let's show the file links that each of these notes have. So just a few of them have links. And as you can see, it adds in a comma and then the property is listed to the right of the note title. And we can go back to configuring our list. If I wanted these to not show up right next to it, but be underneath, I could click this nested properties, turn that on, and now these show up as bullet points underneath the note title. So that's what the nested properties does. If we go back here, we turn that off, it goes back to showing it side by side and has that comma in there. And that is something that we can change here with this property separator. If I don't want a comma and a space, I could put a dash in a space. So now there's a dash there. It not only puts in this symbol, but it also puts in the spaces that you put in around it. I could go back to a comma and then a space. And so you can change this property separator to be whatever you want. This property separator only comes into play when nested properties is turned off. When nested properties is turned on, it just shows underneath the name of the note. So that's really all there is to the list view. It's a very simple, easy view to use. Let's go ahead and take a look at another new feature of bases. This one is going to be in the table view. It allows us to be able to add summaries to each of the columns in our table. Let's add a couple of columns here. I'm going to put file links and type in there. And you can see it adds this little number down here at the bottom of the column. And this one has one too. Let's move that over so we can see it. And these are pre-filled formulas that are offering a summary of the column that we have here. So as we can see, this one has three of these notes that don't have a type. And then over here, it says there are zero empty. And that's because this is a file property and none of these notes are empty. So we can click on this and we can see there are different formulas that are already created for us. So we click on this unique one. This is telling us that there are 10 unique versions of this property here. So we can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are nine notes that have links in them. And then there are a bunch that don't, but these are not unique to each other. So they just count as one unique entry. So that's why we get the number 10. If I put unique on this one, there are two different unique ways in which this property is filled out. There's either this jot type or there's no type. If you don't want to see the summary down here at the bottom, there is an option to hide it. So you can hide summary and then you don't have that there at the bottom. If you wanted to add the summary back in, you just hover over, click on it, and then select one of the summary options. Now these are all pre-made options. You can write your own summaries. I can click add summary here and you can give it a name. New summary is fine. And then there are a bunch of different formulas that you can use in order to be able to create different summaries for this column. If you want to learn more about what functions you can use in your summaries, you can click on the little help icon and it'll bring up this help article from Obsidian and we'll show you all the different functions that you can use to write summaries for these columns.
So depending on what type of property you're creating a summary for, there are different functions that will work on those. So going back here, so this type is a string. So we would be looking at the functions that can be done on a string. Really quickly, I just want to show an example of what this might look like. So let's go back to our new summary and we're going to say values.contains and this will bring up contains and then we're going to do our jot. So this function returns either a true or a false value. So if there is any note that contains the word jot in its type, it's going to return true as we can see that down here at the bottom. I should be able to put another word in here, note maybe. It's still saying true. Maybe I have to put it into quotes. Okay, yeah, so you have to put it into quotes in order for this to work. So now it's saying false. There are no notes that have note in its type. So going back to jot, uh, we can see that it's false. I wonder if it, it requires that there be that emoji there. Okay, so it's looking for the literal string. We can't just have part of it with contains. Now this brings us to the, probably the most interesting new bases feature, and that is a brand new map view. This will allow you to add geographical coordinates to your notes and be able to display them on a map. Now what makes this view interesting is that it's not added in by default. So if you go up to the views, and I create a new view, and I go to layout, you can see we don't have a new map view in our layout. And that's because this new view is added via a plugin, a new plugin that's included in the community plugins rather than the base plugins. Why this is so significant is because the developers of Obsidian are using this as kind of an example of what will be possible for plugin developers to be able to do. They'll be able to add new views to the basis plugin via their community plugins. So in order to get this new map view, we're going to open up settings and we're going to go to community plugins and we're going to browse. Then I'm going to type in Obsidian Maps. It's this one right here. We're going to click install. And we're going to enable it. We're going to close this up, close the settings, and then I'm going to go and to this new view, I'm going to say map. And then the layout is going to be a map. You can see it is now available in our layout menu here. That brings us to this map that we can see. It's kind of centered us on Africa here. And we can move it around. And as I mentioned, we can add geographical locations to our notes and be able to display them on the map. I think this would be useful if you're doing some sort of like travel log and you have notes that are specific to different locations around the world and you, don't, you wanna be able to see all those locations here on this map. I'm just gonna go ahead and add some geographic locations to one of the notes that is in this base already. In order to find that, I'm gonna go back to my table view and I'm going to do this dispatch from Disneyland note. Open this in a new tab. And we're gonna add the coordinates here and then we'll be able to see this note associated with Disneyland on the map. So I'm gonna add a new property and this property is gonna be called coordinates and this needs to be a list so in order to make sure that it is a list you can click on the little icon for the property type and then select list because we're going to add the latitude and the longitude into this property so the latitude for disneyland is this 33.8121 we can hit enter and the longitude is going to be negative and then 117.9190 hit enter and then we're gonna add another property, and this one is gonna be icon, and I'm gonna put the icon as a landmark. And another property we're going to have is color, and I want the color of the icon for this particular note to be blue. And these icons come from a library called Lucide. I'm not sure exactly how to say it, it's L-U-C-I-D-E. I'll include a link to the library in the description below so you can go and see what icons are available to you to include on your markers. So let's go back over to our base. Let's go back to our map view. And we need to configure the view to use those properties that we just set up. We're gonna go in here and we're gonna click on this little icon to configure the view. We're gonna go down to markers and our coordinates property will be the marker coordinates. And as you can see, it's already added in that marker for us, this dispatch from Disneyland. If we zoom down in here, way down in here 
that is Disneyland here on our map. So we've got it marked now. So I'm going to go back to the configuration because we want to have the marker icon be the icon property. And that adds in our little landmark icon. And then the color, we want to be the color property. And now the marker is blue. And that's how easy it is to add your notes to this map view. Like I said, I think this would be really useful if you're traveling to different places and you want to be able to keep a log of where you are and you have different notes that are associated to those different locations. This would be an awesome view to be able to use. And I think what's really nice about this is because this is added in via a plugin, it's not something that everybody's going to want to use. But because it's added in via a plugin, it's very much an optional view. You don't have to use this if you don't need it. So those are the main new things that we're going to be getting in the new Obsidian 1.10 version. As of recording this, it's still in early release, but as soon as it is released generally, you too will be able to use the list view that we've shown off here, as well as this map view, as long as you install the plugin that goes along with it. If you're interested in learning more about the Bases plugin, you can check out my Obsidian Bases playlist on your screen now.